worksheets are, uh, they give us a picture of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity is the name that we use for God. So, what is, uh, today is Trinity Sunday in which we're learning about God's name. And so, um, we see in this picture, the man who's wearing the robe, yeah, he looks like a caveman, that's true, the man who's wearing the caveman thing, is John the Baptist. Um, and so he called people to believe in God. And do you have a guess of who he's baptizing? Jesus is right, Matthew, yes. So right there is Jesus, and he's being baptized. And what's coming down from heaven? A dove, yes. That's right, Miss Katie. The dove equals the Holy Spirit. That's right. This picture comes from the Gospel of Matthew at Jesus' baptism. And it said, the heavens opened up, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. So the one who said that, way up high in the heaven, that's God the Father. And then a, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, so that it wasn't like not that the Holy Spirit is a bird, but that the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus like a bird. Um, and then and Jesus was baptized. And it showed everyone who was there to see his baptism that Jesus really is God. And so I give you this picture because sometimes Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are hard to understand. So this picture is something that you can see uh, that God, is the, God the Father is in heaven speaking. God the Son... Son is being baptized, and God the Holy Spirit comes to be with Jesus. Now, the great thing about the Trinity is that this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, know and love you, and that the same thing that happened to Jesus happens to you. At your baptism, God the Father said, this is my daughter, or this is my son, with whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit now lives in you. And because the Spirit is with you, Jesus is with you always. So you can color this picture um, as you think about the name that we have for God, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear God, Dear God thank you for knowing us and loving us. And thank you for coming to us as Jesus Christ. So that we could know and love you too. Now by your spirit, send us out so that our friends and families and neighbors might know you. Amen. Thank you. You can go back to your places of worship, to activity time, or to the nursery. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might hear your word for us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some of you are avid gardeners. Your green thumbs can turn your backyards into oases and make this church property very lovely. Others of you are, uh, like, you could be professional cooks. You can have nothing in your house except for eggs and relish and turn it into a feast. There are others of you who are business professionals, who know how to manage people, how to bring out the best in everyone, how to manage efficiency and productivity. There are those of you who can sew or paint or draw or use graphic design, direct or act or create a set and bring a vision into reality. And homemakers know how to make every person who steps into your door feel welcome and valued. There is no shortage of gifts and talents and wisdom among all of you here gathered in this room. Wouldn't it be nice if as much as you know about gardening or cooking or managing a business, you knew about the Trinity? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just explain or teach the inner workings of the being of the triune God, uh, just like you could explain the stage or a motor or an engine? The Trinity is difficult to explain. The Trinity is difficult to understand. 
That's partially why I think we have a Sunday devoted to it every year <laughs> in the, through the National Council of Churches. It's very difficult, and we aren't alone in that. Nicodemus, in today's gospel, is really struggling as well. You can almost hear his headache starting when he asks Jesus, how can someone who's old enter into the womb and be born again? Like, his head is working really hard. <laughs> so, we can, in brotherhood and sisterhood, understand Nicodemus's difficulties. I, as a pastor, struggle to introduce people to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and not be guilty of a heresy. That's a false teaching about the Trinity. So to avoid heresies, I often refer to God as the triune God. Triune meaning consisting of three in one. Of course. What? <laughs> and some of you have said that to me, that when I say triune God, you feel very disconnected or alienated from God. And I imagine like, that there are some times where we depict like one body of God and three heads, and it's disturbing. <laughs> okay, so yes, it's difficult to understand the Trinity. And it's sometimes, it's like the more we try to reason it out, the more distanced we feel from God. Trinity Sunday, Trinity Sunday is a good day to acknowledge that there are some things in this life which we will not be able to understand or break down according to our human logic and reason. There are some things, even in 2018, which are a mystery. The Trinity is one of those things. In that no matter how we try or how many different ways we seek to say it, our language will always be limited when it comes to naming God. That's not to say we shouldn't try to talk about God or to think about God or to understand the Trinity. It just gives us a space and a chance to be honest with ourselves that we will be limited. I like some of your pro approach, um, some of us among us have the approach that the fact that the Trinity cannot be explained or that there's much about scripture or the world which we can't explain is actually comforting. That for those of us who have that perspective, it's comforting to know that in our humanness, we are different from God. That it doesn't work out everything according to our language. And that we take comfort, in, as it says in Isaiah. God says, as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. So, if you feel comforted by the fact that you can't explain everything there is to know about the universe or about God, because God is so much greater than you, then good. Rest in that comfort. Because our language is limited. The Trinity cannot be explained because the Trinity is not a thing to be understood or explained. The Trinity is our living God with whom we have a relationship. And we have that relationship because God has given it to us. Love for us, a desire to be in relationship, that is why God has made sure that we know him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So today, rather than seek to explain all the intricacies of the Trinity, this sermon seeks to give you an experience of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so now listen to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit speak to you through his word. For God the Father, you may either, when you're listening to God the Father, you might either look up, since Psalm 29 tells us that God is enthroned in the everlasting heavens, or you may look here at his word with, through which he speaks to us. God the Father says to us today through Psalm 29 and Isaiah 6 and John 3. My voice is a powerful voice. It flashes like lightning and shakes the wilderness. But you need not be afraid of it, my children, for I am your Father. For I so loved the world and I so loved you that I sent my only Son that whoever believes in him will not die but may have eternal life. And you, my children, have eternal life with me. And now listen to the voice of God the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
As you listen to Jesus Christ, God the Son, you may either choose to live up at the cross, for it is there that he gave his life for you, or you may look here at the elements of his body and blood, for it is here that he gives us life and forgiveness each week. So, through Isaiah 6 and John 3, God the Son says to you, This is my body given for you, and this is my blood shed for you. When it has touched your lips, your guilt departs from you, and your sin is blotted out. My Father sent me to the world, to you, because my Father so loved the world and so loved you that whoever believes in me may have eternal life. And I came because I so loved the world and so loved you that you may live. For my Father did not send me to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through me. And you are saved. And now, as you listen to the Holy Spirit, you might look around the room at this building, this congregation which God has built. You might look at your neighbors who who are um, the temples of the Holy Spirit in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. Jesus said today in John 3 that just like the wind, we cannot see where it comes from or where it goes, but we hear it and we see its effects. So too it is with the Holy Spirit, that we cannot see where the Holy Spirit comes or where the Holy Spirit goes, but we see the results of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is the one who has called and gathered and enlightened this church to make us one body in Christ. That the Holy Spirit has built this congregation and gathered us all to be together. And so, through Isaiah 6, Psalm 29, John 3, and Romans 8, the Holy Spirit says to you today, Very truly I tell you, you will enter the kingdom of God, for you have been born from above, by water and me, the Spirit, in your baptism. In your baptism, I adopted you, children of God, so do not fall back into fear. When you pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, That is me praying through you, testifying to you that you are children of God and that you will enter in the kingdom of heaven. So whom shall I send and who will go for us? And so perhaps we wish to answer Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity Trinity today, to say, here I am, Lord, send me. And so if that is your prayer, and you are now being sent, then this week, or from now on, try not to feel compelled to explain the Trinity to others, especially those who don't believe. Instead, do what the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have done for you. Give those others an experience of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by loving them, forgiving them, making life possible for them so that they may truly live. It is difficult and sometimes frustrating to try to understand teachings like the Trinity, but it's okay because we don't need to understand everything there is to know about the Trinity. All we need to know is the Trinity, which you do, because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have sought you out because the Trinity knows you. The God who created you, the God who has redeemed you, and the God who sustains you in faith is at work in you, has given you eternal life. And that Trinity so loved the world, so loved you, that he came as Jesus Christ, that you might have life in his name. And so you do have life now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.